What is a federal excise tax? How does it impact the heavy truck and trailer industries? That's what we're talking about. The contents of this video are taken from our handy dandy, totally free guide to FETs for heavy duty drivers and dealers just like you, which is linked in the description. But we need to start this with a quick disclaimer. This video is not intended as professional advice on tax issues. I'm not a tax professional, I just play one on YouTube. Think of this more as the gist of federal excise taxes. So what is the federal excise tax according to the IRS? <clears throat> excise taxes are taxes that are imposed on various goods, services, and activities. Such taxes may be imposed on the manufacturer, retailer, or consumer, depending on the specific tax. Well, that was about as clear as coffee, so in this video, we're going to attempt to summarize what is a federal excise tax, or an FET, what is the difference between an FET and a sales tax? Who pays an FET? How is an FET reported to the IRS? How does an FET impact the heavy duty industries, meaning heavy equipment, commercial trucking, and commercial trailer industries? And how can I account for an FET in my dealer management system? If you already have somewhat of a gist of an FET and you simply want to know how the FET impacts the heavy equipment and trucking industries, fast forward to the time listed here. Still here? Nice. So first off, what is the federal excise tax? Let's begin with a more digestible definition of an excise tax. Excise taxes are generally taxes required for using specific goods and services to a greater extent than others. For instance, there may be an excise tax on fuel or commercial trucking because drivers are most likely to use public roads more than say, Rollerblade and Dave. You win again, Rollerblade and Dave. In a different vein, excise taxes may fall on industries deemed excessive, what some may classify as non-essential, or even what some have called a sin tax. No, not sin tax, S-I-N tax. For example, excise taxes may apply to the indoor tanning and tobacco industries because unlike other industries, they are in the turning people into roasted potatoes business. A nap in a tanning bed or a pack of smokes may be deemed excessive and even somewhat irresponsible from the perspective of the legal community, especially if you're smoking in the tanning bed. But you know, you do you, I guess. In many cases, excise taxes tend to be used to fund the very infrastructures that its payers use more than the average person, such as fuel tax for road maintenance and the like. Some other examples of items subject to excise taxes include plane tickets, new and used vehicles at different rates, alcoholic beverages, types of gambling, and the like. And like the federal government, states can impose their own excise taxes as well, and at various levels. What is the difference between an FET and a sales tax? Aren't we already paying taxes on our gas and cigarettes? It's true. Unless you're tax exempt, you're likely paying sales tax in addition to an excise tax on your pack of Turkish Royals. There are a handful of differences between an excise tax and a sales tax. Firstly, excise taxes are more selective about the items or services being taxed. While you may need to pay an excise tax on a bottle of whiskey, you won't on a loaf of bread. Secondly, while sales taxes may be calculated as a percentage of the cost of the purchase, many excise taxes are calculated per unit purchase. That means per gallon of gas, per pack of cigarettes, and the like. This makes excise taxes somewhat of a hidden indirect tax. And not all excise taxes are going to show up on your receipt. Which brings us to our next question. Who pays the federal excise tax, or FET? Determining who pays an FET depends on what you mean by paying. Who files the paperwork, or who is left with the lighter wallet? Doesn't the customer actually foot the FET? Technically, an FET is paid to the government at the seller level, the manufacturer, dealer, and the like. This is the side of the transaction responsible for filing the necessary paperwork with the IRS. However, most on the seller side pass the cost of excise taxes onto the buyer by including it in the out-the-door price of their goods and services. For example, if you look at your itemized receipt from the gas station, you won't see excise tax on there anywhere. Instead, this price has been factored into the final price of filling up your tank. The consumer rarely sees an itemized receipt informing them of just how much of the price that they're paying is going towards an excise tax. This is allowed by the tax code, even if the excise taxes are quite high. Invoices for some products, however, may specify an itemized excise tax. How are federal excise taxes reported to the IRS? For retailers whose industries require an FET, they need to file a Form 720 and pay excise taxes to the IRS every quarter. This can also be performed on their behalf through a designated third party. 
What are the quarterly excise tax deadlines? Quarterly payment deadlines are on the following business days. Quarter 1, January through March deadline, April 30th. Quarter 2, April through June deadline, July 31st. Quarter 3, July through September deadline, October 31st. Quarter 4, October through December deadline, January 31st. Though you're welcome to lick a stamp and send your excise tax forms through the Postage Service, the IRS strongly encourages electronic filing through an approved source. This has the benefit of receiving confirmation that your filing has been received. How does an FET impact heavy-duty commercial truck and trailer industries? There are various federal excise taxes that impact the commercial trucking and trailer industries, some for truck owners and others for commercial truck and trailer dealers. Let's hop into some specific excise taxes on heavy vehicles. What is the Heavy Highway Vehicle Use Tax? There is a federal excise tax called the Heavy Highway Vehicle Use Tax, an annual tax paid on heavy highway trucks with a gross weight of 55,000 pounds or more that are driven on public highways. For this, Form 2290 is required. The payer of this excise tax is more apparent, usually matching the name on the truck's title. What are retail FETs for commercial truck and trailer dealers? So you wouldn't think that heavy-duty trucks and their corresponding trailers would fall into the same taxable product category as cigarettes, booze, and sports gambling, right? Well, according to tax law, they do. Heavy-duty trucks and trailers, not just commercial, as well as their associated parts, are typically subject to a 12% FET as of the publishing of this piece. As we mentioned above, this tax is typically passed on to the customer. What are the FET specifics for the retail tax on heavy trucks, trailers, and tractors? For those who would like to dive deeper into federal excise tax requirements, deeper than this video can get into anyways, the IRS has created an immensely helpful guide entitled Publication 510, Excise Taxes, Including Fuel Tax Credits and Refunds. If you turn to Chapter 6 on page 33, you can see a full explanation of retail tax on heavy trucks, trailers, and tractors, which not only contains requirement breakdowns, but also easy-to-digest scenario examples. This guide is essentially your go-to guide for determining the FET application of heavy trucks and trailers. Now, if you're a truck, trailer, or heavy equipment dealership, accounting for your FETs can get tricky but it absolutely doesn't have to be. In fact, your dealer management system may even help crunch these numbers for you. How can I account for the FET in my dealer management system? Well, in the past, dealerships have had to manually crunch the FET rate for their transactions and update the figures on invoices and other transactional documentation. These days, many dealer management systems can automatically calculate FET rates for dealers. Speaking of which, for dealerships in the heavy duty truck and commercial trailer industries, my Little Salesman allows dealers to simply plug in the current FET rate into the structure section of their deals panel to include the correct FET amount on a summary for every transaction. This is just one of the many handy features designed to make life easier for sales professionals in the heavy equipment, commercial truck, and trailer industries from your friends at My Little Salesman. If you're interested in joining me for a peek under the hood of our robust yet ridiculously intuitive deal system for heavy-duty dealers, We've created a short video walkthrough for you to enjoy linked on the screen here as well as in the description thingy. Until next time, I've been Ken from MyLittleSalesman.com.